I'm Matthew Clark and I've been registered blind since birth with Labour's congenital amaurosis, which is a genetic condition that uh, most often takes away all of a person's sight, although luckily I have about 5% vision remaining. I use photography alongside my sight condition just as a, a hobby, something to go somewhere to do to capture and create memories just as anyone with full sight might do. The extra level of photography for me personally is that not only can I see and capture a great image and a great memory, but in that photo by blowing it up on an iPad or a big monitor later on, suddenly you might be able to see so much more than you ever thought was possible. And that discovery of visual information rather than ignoring it uh, is something that's been really important to me. The spot at the top of the steps where we took this one particular photo I discovered some time ago when I had some free time in Edinburgh. It was a nice day. I went for a walk and then from the top of these steps I didn't see the train station first of all. I heard it. I heard some of the announcements just echoing up the steps and I thought not only is that my way home but if I have a closer look I was able to take a really nice photo on that day. With my DSLR, something that I could not live without is live view. This is where the image that you're going to capture is shown on the monitor rather than through the viewfinder, the wee thing that you have to put your eye right up to. I can't see enough through that, so live view is a great way for me to help compose my picture. Up the top of Carlton Hill, which funnily enough I've never known how to get to until today, there's some really famous photographs of Edinburgh you can get from there, uh, particularly involving some of the monuments up there. So obviously I want to try and recreate those, but I don't just want to recreate it. I took pictures from different angles, getting different perspectives in with the site. So in some I would get a tree into the picture as well, so you've got a closer perspective of the tree to compare to the monument and then you have, depending on what angle you're taking, I can get different views of the city in behind that and just experimenting with that to get a great picture and again to enjoy seeing Edinburgh better. There are a lot of photography apps you can get for smartphones. There's the built-in camera, there are advanced cameras with more settings like Camera Plus for the iPhone. Taking the iPhone, which is what I use, you can adjust the point of focus by tapping on the camera screen wherever you want that image to be focused. And when you're taking a picture of a large group in particular, something that is very nice is with voiceover turned on, it will now announce to you how many faces are in the frame so you know that the right number of people are there. Being a partially sighted photographer is completely possible because we all have our own unique perspectives on the world, the way we feel about it, the way we experience it using all our other senses. So I encourage anyone, use your senses, use your feelings about the world to go and capture it however you may and to take plenty of photos because when it's harder to see what you are taking the photograph of, the more photos you've got, the more different angles and shots and versions you can choose between to find the right one. Photography has given me a new hobby, a way to think about and capture and enjoy the world a whole lot more and to share that with people. My top tips for photography as a partially sighted person are to use all of your senses and the environment around you to help capture that shot and when you're composing it to think about the rule of thirds in how you're composing that picture and to have perspective of multiple items in that picture to make your subject and the environment around it so much more interesting.